Hi, everybody. If you're here, give me a shout out. Let me know you're here. We'll wait a minute for people to join. Hope everybody's doing good today. Working out oh. sucks. <laughs> your My sound is on. First, yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> my sound was on my computer. <sighs> Hi, Kim. Hi, Terry. Hi, Caitlin, Nicole. Yay. Diane, Kathy. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining me. I was trying to do a different time for this live. I just kind of want to mix it up because some people that live in other countries can't join at other times. So, yay. Hi, Mandy. Oh, I'm so glad. Kalisha. Kristen, Suzanne, yay, Tracy, okay, yay, Adele, <laughs> you're going through sewing withdrawals, <gasps> oh, I've been doing lots of sewing and videos this week, because I'm trying to be able to make up for the week that I'm going to be gone next week, so, yay, hi, Marion, I'm good, Alice, hi, Hannah, so many people here. Okay, so we are doing the Camille bag pattern today. I have made this quite a few times. I think maybe six or seven times now. I just made no sojo. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, I just made four of them for my cousins uh, weekend with my girl cousins, and they loved them. I change the pattern just a tiny bit, not so much the measurements, but just like the outside stuff on it. Um, Nicole, <laughs> can I adopt you? I'm just going to visit family for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hi, Maureen. Um, so I am going to put this Camille together and I'll let you know the little changes that I do make. It's mostly the handles and the connectors. I changed a little bit different because she does it with leather. I'm not doing this with leather, so I do it a little bit different. And my interfacing, I tried something different with my interfacing. So my bottom pieces are this gorgeous uh, vinyl I'm using from my punk broidery. It's like the faux leather tooled vinyl, so pretty. But I felt like it was too thin and I wanted to see if I put Decaville light on the back of this, if I could eliminate the Peltex piece in the lining. So I am going to try that on this bag. So we'll see how that works. And then other than that, it's just handles and connectors that I changed. Hi guys. Okay. Yay. We got a good crew going here. So I'm hoping I can finish this whole bag in one sitting. I forgot to get my zipper tape. Just a second. That's the only thing I'm missing over here. Okay. Okay. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Crystal. Ruby, Judy, Amber. Yay. Elizabeth and Marciella. Okay. Yay. Let's get going. Let's start sewing this up. So I will try my darndest to keep up with comments and questions. All right, so if I miss your question, just add, ask it again, and I will, I will try very hard to look at it. Okay, let's get started. I have all my pieces here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over my pieces just real, real fast. So these are my two outside bottom pieces. Again, I put Decaville Light on them. The pattern calls for wax canvas or leather, which has a bit more of a hold to it, but my vinyl was kind of thin. So I'm gonna interface it and see how that goes. Kalisha, yay, your scissors are coming today. <laughs> so happy for you. I hope you love them. Um, okay, so I have three slip pocket pieces. These are two on the outsides, so on each side, one on the inside. I interface those with Woven Fuse 2, and we're going to start with those, so I'm going to put those over here. 
my top part of my bag, I'm using this um, waterproof canvas. Okay, so you should have two pieces for the top part of your bag. Whoops. Sorry, I'm just moving a little bit. And then I have an inside slip pocket piece as well. Oh no, that's my inside. This is my zipper pocket. Um, I don't think the pattern calls for a zipper pocket, but I love zipper pockets and I don't want to do a bag without it. So I'm adding a zipper pocket. And then my two inside lining pieces, which are just waterproof canvas, so I'm not interfacing it. I know, isn't that striped, striped fabric really cool? And then I have four connectors um, and my two handles. I have a crossbody strap and two more connectors with D-rings for my crossbody strap. And I will show you those when I get to it. So let's start going on this. Oh, <laughs> Dawn, dinner can wait, huh? All right, I'm gonna put you guys right here. Let me know how it goes. Okay, so you wanna get your um, slip pockets, your front and back slip pockets, super easy. We're just gonna fold them and we're gonna top stitch along that top line here, along your fold. And I am gonna have to change my bobbin soon, I think. Hey, oh, there goes my bobbin. See, I was right. I did the handles and they're all gone. Uh, this pattern is by Georgia Girl Stitches. Um, I will link the pattern after the video in the description. I just forgot to do that first. All right, I need to change my bobbin real quick. You're welcome, Crystal. All right, just a second. Here we go. Ah. I always feel rushed in these live videos, like I gotta get the bag done. I hope I can make it all in one sitting, we'll see. This bag, the other reason I wanted to show this bag again is because this is a great gift. If you're looking for more of a beginner pattern that is cute, but simple and easy to put together, and you can make a few at a time, this is it. This is great for Christmas. So you do that twice, two slip pockets. No, it's by Georgia Girl Stitches. This is her, I think it's her second. This was the first pattern she ever came out with. She now has two patterns out, I believe. I found her on um, Instagram. Okay, so you wanna put your pocket on your top piece, just like this. Um, I don't know how I stumbled across it. I, it. I think it was like a hashtag that I follow. And I saw her bag and I thought, dang, that's cute. And then um, the pattern came out, so. All right, so we're just, just um, putting this pocket on here and then we will separate it. I'm just basting the edges real quick. Now, I've done this front pocket a couple different ways. Hi, Kelly. Oh, my sweet girl is um, at school. <laughs> okay, so, oh, that's super sweet, Kelly, thank you. So I do this front pocket one of two ways. You can just split it um, down the middle. I'm going to move this just a little bit. You can just split it down the middle, but on the bag that I use, I split it in thirds. 
and my iPhone fits perfectly in that middle pocket. The only bad thing is those two side pockets are super like kind of tiny. I can fit like chapstick and stuff in them, but nothing huge. I can fit my AirPods, which is nice, but it's a perfect pocket for my iPhone, which I love. So I'm going to do that um, on this pattern real quick. So it is 16. So I'm going to do five and a fourth, five and a fourth. We'll see what that gives us. Let's try five and a fourth. All right, so I'm gonna split it up into three. And I think I need my chalk pin. Oh, you're not late, we just started. You are good. Guys, I have a hundred of these chalk pins coming to me to sell on my site. I'm super excited. All right, so I am just gonna split my front pocket into thirds and then my back pocket I'm just gonna leave in two separate. It's Georgia Girl Stitches, Doreen. I will link it below in the description when the video is done. I just forgot to do it before I started. Okay, so I'm just going to um, separate those pockets real quick. Nothing too fancy about that, just sewing up. And then what I do is I sew back down the same line. You could do one line up and then go right next to that one and go back down. It's totally up to you, but I just go like this and then come back down. And that just gives it a double row of stitching right there. Okay. So I've got this pocket and I've got this pocket and then I'm going to separate the other one. Um, do I have to hold my threads when I start my machine? Sometimes. Sometimes it sucks them in there. I kind of just, when I remember I do. But yeah, sometimes my threads get sucked in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna turn it and come back down. Awesome. Now, you could, um, you could have done two little lines and then put a rivet in the middle, but I did a double row of stitching, so I feel like it's gonna be okay. You can't even see my stitching because of <laughs> my fabric, but that's what it looks like. Okay, so I have the three pockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my back one too. And I'm just gonna split the back one up in two pockets. And I think I'll do that as I go. So I'm gonna mark it first. And then I'll, cause they don't have to match. That's straight. Hi, Jaded. How's it going? All right, so I'm just going to stitch that on all together. Does the chalk pen have wax in it? I don't think so. I have never had an issue with it marking my fabric and not coming off if that's what you're worried about. That's been my experience. I only use the white one. I have uh, heard people say the other colors don't come off completely, so I didn't, 
I didn't order any other colors. I just did white. Today's your birthday. Okay. Sorry guys, let me know if it's back. Is it buffering on your end? Yeah. I told him to go to music. Okay, it's back. Yay, sorry about that. I had my phone on do not disturb, but it still let a call through and I don't know if that's why. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. <laughs> um, Nicole, I saw your question about those small rivets and yes, so that would be perfect. So if you did the two lines of stitching down this pocket, that little rivet would be perfect to put in the middle right there. That's exactly what I would do. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I just did two big pockets on the back side. All right, so let's continue. Hopefully my video is going good. Hi, Lee. Lenny, Lenny, I forget how to pronounce your name. Let me know, because I know I said it wrong. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take those pieces we just did and our bottom pieces, okay? I'm losing everything today. I just lost my chalk pen. Okay. Yes, you did. Catch a live. Woohoo. All right. So you're going to take your bottom piece and we're going to attach that. All right. And I forget, just a second, I forget what she uses as her seam allowance on this pattern. I don't remember. Half inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're doing half inch seam allowance, guys. Sorry about that. I usually look these over before I start. Okay, so we're going to put this bottom piece on half inch seam allowance. Okay, and then you want to fold that down and we are going to top stitch. Very basic. So that's my back piece. I'm gonna get my front piece here and do the same thing. And I did already cut all of my um, corners out of my pieces. I just find it's easier if I do that in the beginning so I don't have to do it in the middle of making the bag. So just FYI. Okay, and then top stitch that down as well. Here we go. So next step I'm gonna do is before I go to my lining and stuff, I'm gonna finish my front pieces. So I am going to put my handles on. So 
okay? My, well, my connectors. So I'm gonna clip my centers. Well, at least my top. Well, I'll do my bottom too, so I can get a straight center line. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my connectors. So I'm doing connectors on this. And the placement, I place the same width as these handles um, are placed on her bag. Which I forget what that is, so just give me a second. <laughs> All right, there they are. So, punch down. And we want to go five inches. Five inches over from the edge. I dropped my chalk pin, just a second. Okay. So I'm gonna go right here. And right here. Let me see if I like that. There. And on the outside or on the inside? Right in the middle. Okay. You want to mark five inches over from your edges if you're doing the connector way, the way I am um, choosing to do it. And then we're going to center it on that line. And then we're going to sew it on. And I do like the whole box with the X. Oh, hi, Kim. Thank you. Okay. Lots of people. All of a sudden, all of my stuff is coming through. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so I'm putting it, I'm centering it on that line and I'm doing it right above this um, slip pocket, okay? That's where I'm putting my connector. All right. Bye, Doreen. Have a good dinner. Um, the foam I use, I don't know if it comes in bigger amounts. I wish it did. I haven't found it in bigger amounts. If you do find it in bigger amounts, let me know. Okay, I'm just sewing rectangle first on my connector. And then I'm gonna sew an X through the middle. And I'm also gonna put rivets on it. It's gonna be super secure. is better now. All right. So that's what I got on my first connector. Okay. And I am going to put on the next one. Same spot, same thing. Second verse, same as with the first. Cindy, sewing bags is definitely a learning curve for me. Yes, it is different than 
just putting together other things. It is definitely a learning curve. Okay, um, Maria, are you using the blue or purple vinyl? It is blue. It is a blue vinyl. And it is so pretty. Okay, in the middle of that five inch line in that I did. Okay. And I put this leather piece behind my foot so it doesn't eat my vinyl. Definitely important if you have a walking foot. Okay. Tammy, is there a puppy doodle yet? No, I'm still looking. Um, yes, I can see your comments, Nicole. I'm sorry, did you ask me something else? I'm missing a lot. Um, no puppy doodle yet. I am in the works of looking for one, but they are super hard to find right now. I'd even be happy with an older rescue, but I've had zero luck. So if anybody knows of any puppies, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Coral Summer. I love watching your videos. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. All right. So I have got my two connectors on there and then I'm going to add my nameplate real quick because I like to put it on this front piece and then we'll move to the back. Hi from Pittsburgh. What's your first name? All I see is Scrap and Diddy which is great, but I don't know who you are. What's your first name? All right, so I'm just putting my nameplate on real quick. Charlie. Yay, Crystal, hi. You did. All right, nothing fancy about this, sorry. Just necessity. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna cover my prongs up, always cover your prongs up. Okay. So that is my front panel. Move on to the back real quick. And same thing, five inches in from your edges. I hope everybody, is everybody's connection better? Hopefully it's cleared up. All right. Get my other two connectors. And my connector pieces, I did um, two by four, in case anybody was wondering. I, that's not in the pattern, so just in case. In the pattern, she just puts the leather handles directly onto the bag. But I like for my handles to be able to lay down, which is why I like doing it with connectors. Hi from Denmark. Hi, thank you. Hi from Sweden. Tammy, maybe in Dallas there's some puppies for me. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, I don't want to go all the way to Dallas. All right, so we do the same thing with these ones.
Um, I don't know about upholstery foam. I have no idea. I don't have any experience with that. I just know you don't want it thick. You don't want thick foam. You want it more, at least I like the thinner foam for my projects, for my bags. Oh, my line's a little crooked. Oh well. That's okay. Connection's good. Oh, good. I'm glad. All right. And then put on your last connector. <laughs> and I can have your puppy. <laughs> I actually want a Bernadoodle. So half Bernie's mountain dog and half poodle that's the dog that we want and it's a hard doggy to find but my little charlotte has been begging for a dog for years and i think we're about ready Headliner foam, okay. I've never used headliner foam, so I am not sure, but it sounds like it works. Those are my four connectors and my front back pieces are all put together. So let's work on our inside pieces real quick. So we'll do our slip pocket. So you want to, let me heat, make my iron heat up real quick. Clean up my space a little bit, sorry guys. This is all the stuff I can usually edit out of a video. <laughs> all right, so for the slip pocket, sorry, I gotta go back. I wanna make sure I'm telling you guys the right stuff. So you want to do right sides together and sew along the bottom. It's gonna make a big long tube and we're gonna turn that through because you will see both edges on the inside pocket, okay? Let's go ahead and Sew that up. All right. And then I'm going to turn that through. Um, Aloha Leah. I Get my vinyl and hardware from this one that I'm using is My Punk Broidery, which is one of my favorites. Um, I also order quite a bit of marine vinyl from fabric.com. It's marine vinyl. That's the kind that I use. Um, my faux leather, I really like the Emmeline Mora faux leather. And my hardware, I've started carrying my own hardware on my website, so a lot of it is from my own stock now. But I also have some from Emmeline Bags and Mormino.com, which is Lauren Mormino's. Those are all my to-go um, hardware places. Okay, so I'm just going to press this real quick. Got my tiny little iron board over here, isn't it cute? I've decided it's so much easier having an iron right by my machine. 
instead of all the way across the room. All right, so just iron this. There's our slip pocket. Woo. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm gonna place it on my lining and we want to go, I forget how far up. Edge. Okay, so 3.5, three and a half inches down here. Okay, so there's our marking. Um, so I am going to baste this on first and then I'll separate it. Actually, no, I'll separate it as I go. Just kidding. And I need to top stitch it. <laughs> um, what is my stitch length on the connectors? It's about a five. That's usually all my top stitching and all of that is about a five. Sorry, I forgot to top stitch this real quick. And I am going to separate it into threes like I did on my front pockets. And I just realized this is going the opposite way. Did I use the wrong piece? <laughs> I used the wrong piece, guys. This is my zipper pocket piece and it's the same length. That's hilarious. All right, that works. We're just gonna go with it, okay? Make sure you get the right one. Um, yeah, it, my machine came with a walking foot. Okay, I'm separating this into three. Um, Diane, it's by Georgia Girl Stitches. I'll link the pattern in the description when I'm done with the video. I forgot to do that. Um, did I miss something? I have to do boop, boop. Okay. <laughs> so that's okay. I think my zipper pocket piece and my slip pocket piece were almost exactly the same size, so it's all good. <laughs> and that sounds like a cute dog. Okay. Yeah. So what tape do you use to cover your prongs? Oh, did I miss that question? Yeah. What tape do I use to cover my prongs? It is just a double-sided tape, leather tape from Waywack. And um, I just, it's a thicker, I think it's a half inch. And I just take off one side of the tape and it works great. So that's what I use. Now I'm separating the pockets with two separate lines of stitching like she has in the pattern, just so you guys can see. I go one over and one back and then one over again on the top. And then I go back down along the other side of the line down here. So it makes actually two rows of stitching instead of how I did it on the front where it was just one big row. So you can do that too. I actually don't think this is how she has it sewing on in the pattern. So this is kind of my own way of doing it here. That's what I love about this bag though. You can really make it your own. There's lots of room for 
changing things up. It's such a good base, this, this pattern and all the measurements. It's a good base for lots of different ways that you can do it. Okay. <laughs> GoPro on your forehead. Uh, um, my husband has a GoPro. Should I try that next time? <laughs> That'd be funny. All right. So I have my three pockets done. Uh, the chevron fabric that you used for your last tutorial. Um, yes. Hawthorne threads, Crystal. And I'm pretty sure... In the description link below, I have the direct link for that chevron fabric if you click on that, okay? So I am just going to do um, a, a quick zipper pocket on this side. And my piece is way too big now, so I'm going to cut this down because I mixed up my pieces and that's okay. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm just going to cut this down. I think I wanted it to be, let's do 11. I'm just gonna cut an inch off of it. Right? You bet, Crystal. Mm, actually, no, I'm gonna do two inches off of this real quick. Okay. Thank you, Shazzy. All right, so I am just doing a quick zipper the way that I like to do my zippers. I'm not using a zipper facing. All right, 11 inches. I'm doing 11 inches wide. No, yeah, 11 inches wide. About right there. And make sure you melt your ends here. Okay, and then put your zipper on. Come on. Oh, of course, the one time I can't get my zipper on. There we go. All right. There's my zipper. I'm going to mark on the back here. I'm going to go about an inch and a fourth down from the top. Again, the zipper is not in the pattern. I'm just adding this onto my bag. And then I like to do a half inch down from that. I'm using a five inch zipper, so inch in on my sides. And I just drop my zipper. <laughs> All right. So take your lining piece. And I'm just creasing to find my centers here. Go down about, my slip pocket was three and a half. I'm gonna go about three inches down. Okay, and then I'm gonna sew that rectangle on. Wanna make sure, yeah, that looks good. And you wanna do a smaller stitch length for this as well, for your zipper pockets.
Okay. There's that. And then we want to cut that open. I need to replace my blade, just a second. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Hi, Lorraine. Checking in from work. I hope you're having a good work day. All right, that'll work better. Okay, much better. I use this tool so much, it gets dull fast. If you guys do lots of zippers, I would highly suggest in investing in one of these. They're not that much, I think they're like 10 bucks. It's a Fiskars soft grip. Best tool I've ever bought. All right. this down I don't I may take this to the iron I'm not sure I don't think I'll need to all right so <laughs> sit that there for a second get my zipper I dropped it all right you want to put some double-sided tape on this All right. And then you want your zipper to open left to right. So make sure that you have it going the right way when you put it on your pocket. I'm gonna undo my bottom one first and place that on first. Hard not to get my head right in there because I need to see. So sorry if my head's in your way. <laughs> All right. There. Okay, and then I flip it up and I do my top. I'm sticking all over here and then flip your top up all right and there is my zipper I'm gonna sew that on back at the normal top stitch length so about a five for me I don't know um, if machines are have different indicators of stitch length. I'm not sure if they're all the same. So when I say a five to a five and a half, it may be different on your machine. I'm not sure. That's something I'm not familiar with.
All right, so there is my zipper pocket inside of my bag. I'm going to put this up and I'm going to stitch it shut. You could leave this zipper open and close your opening. I think I'm going to do that actually. I think that's what I've done on my last bags. I tend to forget. I need to write more things down. <laughs> I just kind of do it and then I forget what I did. I am going to cut this open and have that be my main closure. Sorry, I just trimmed up my zipper there. I'm gonna melt it. I am gonna also um, iron up my pockets real quick. So when you go to sew it closed, it's nice and easy because it already has that crease. Sorry I'm moving you so much here. All right, now I'm gonna sew that up. Poodle rescue, I've already done that, Margaret. Already done the poodle rescue. They have no available dogs right now, but they have our name. Hi, Celine, how are you? Thank you, all right. E.L. Ramos, you got one of those Fisker tools? Best thing ever. Okay. So it's time to do our main zipper. So I am gonna mark my centers. I don't think I did that on this piece. Did I do it on this one? Nope, I didn't. This one. All right, so for my um, zipper, I am going to do uh, one end folded at 90 degrees and the other with a zipper tab. Which is different than the pattern as well. I just like the way that looks on the top, so that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so I need to measure, I think I'm going to cut it at 16 because my bag is 16 total across and I want to give myself a little extra room there to work with. Hi Lynn from New Hampshire, I'm glad you made it. Okay, I've shown this a million times in my videos as well. I'm just doing the 90 degree turn here on the zipper. So I mark the same spot across the zipper and then I'm gonna split it open and pinch it and put a pin in it and stitch across. So just like that, maybe, 
That pen's not working. I need new pens. All right. Oh, Sand Dollar Studio, I'm so glad. I would love a rescue. I am all for doing the rescue thing, but um, they said that we can't have a child under the age of 10, which we have Charlotte. And we can't have children over the age of 16, which my oldest is. So I'm like, okay. I don't know if that was just for the specific dog that they had um, available or if that was in general. So that was my experience with the doodle rescue so far. All right. So I'm just stitching this down here. side. And then you just cut off the little extras. I'm going to melt my ends. Louisa, thank you. Zippers just take practice. You can do it. Just keep practicing. I feel like that's with anything. Okay, so I have a 15 inch zipper. Oh, I've checked everywhere online. Online is just confusing. I, and I don't want to get scammed, so I don't know what to do. I'll figure it out. All right, I think I did a 14 inch zipper last time. That sounds right. So you want, you want your zipper to be about 14 when you're done if you're doing it this way from front to back. And I'm going to put on a little zipper tab that I've already folded in. Nothing fancy about that either. It's just a two by two inch square that I folded raw inches in and then fold it again. Come on. Okay. And then I'm putting that on and I'm going to trim it to the length of my zipper. Okay. Oh yeah, you're welcome, Charlie. Okay. So I am going to mark the centers of this zipper. Tiny, tiny clips. And then I'm going to put this whole thing together. I'm gonna to move this out just a little bit because I've got big pieces to work with here. So I'm gonna get my front piece first. Okay, and I already have my center marked, so I'm going to line up my centers, zipper um, right side down and Exterior right side up, and I'm gonna baste this in place. So this is just like, if you've made a boxy bag or the peekaboo makeup bag, this is exactly how those are assembled at the end. So it's the same exact assembly. So I'm gonna baste that down first so it stays in place, and then I'll add my lining to it. Okay, and then I want to do my, um, I think I want to do my zipper pocket lining on this one. 
Okay, and then you just make a zipper sandwich. Right sides um, facing together of your lining and exterior. And I'm just sewing on my lining now, okay? Oh, thanks, Celine. I struggled with this one. I wasn't sure if the floral really went with the stripes, but I like it. Yes, Lisa, you totally can do two zipper tabs. I just feel like um, your bag doesn't open as wide when you do that, but you can totally do two zipper tabs as well. Maybe that's just me being silly. But if you're going to be making quite a few bags, you need to kind of not be afraid to do that zipper turn because that is on a ton of patterns. So practice it. All right. I've got those two sewn together. Oh no, you know what I forgot? My connector. I forgot my connector. That's okay, add it. I need to add it right there. Give me just a second. Um, yes, I want it right there. So I go an inch and a half in, and I forgot to baste it on before I did my zipper. Sorry about that, guys. So I go an inch and a half in and that's where I'm gonna put my little D-ring connector. So I'm just gonna take this off real quick. It's an easy fix. I'm glad I realized that before I got any further. Okay. I have these D-ring connectors. They are 3 4 inch. And um, uh, this is how I like to do this bag. So I'm gonna put it right there where I had it marked. So I'll baste it on my next piece. So I'm gonna slide it in there. About right there. And I'm gonna have quite a bit of an overhang there because I wanna be able to put a rivet through it when it's um, all turned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and baste that on. I'll show you a little bit closer up how I did that on um, the next side because it's the same exact way of doing it. And I'm gonna give that that little extra row of stitching that it needs here. All right. Fixed my connector. So when my bag is turned, it's right there by my zipper, okay? And then I'm gonna put the other one on the opposite side. And I really like how that hangs when you have your cross body strap on. I really feel like it just um, fits really good. Okay, so we're gonna top stitch that. And we are going to top stitch it with our lining out of the way, okay? So our seam allowance is going towards our exterior lining and our actual lining is pulled up out of the way. Um, you find it easier to hand stitch the zipper ends. Yeah, you could do that too. A lot of people hand stitch that 90 degree turn too. That is great, Don. I've seen that. You can totally do that. Um, was I able to resolve Shopify, you mean? Not Spotify? Yeah. I finally, after about two and a half weeks of being told someone would get back to me, they finally got back to me and fixed it. Oh, yay. Hi from Germany. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. Ooh, 
Lori. Oh, thank you, Lori. Kalisha, you got your scissors. Yay. I'm so glad. <laughs> okay. So that is our first side. So we're just going to do the, the other side the same way. And I won't forget my connector this time. So we got my connector here. And I'm doing it on this same side because when it's turned around, it's on the opposite side. So you place it on the same side as you did the other one. So that's one and a half inches in, and I'm going to baste it there before I start putting on my zipper. Uh-oh, I think my tape came off my nameplate. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to place this right there. That looks about right and baste that on. And then I'll put my zipper on. Okay. I need to clip my center too on this one. So lining right side up, zipper right side down on top. Clip your centers and go from there. All right, I'm gonna baste that on first. get your other lining piece on top. We're almost there. fourth inch seam allowance here. Got all these layers under here. Just make sure you're not uh, sewing up something that you shouldn't be. Gonna move my zipper out of the way. All right. to top stitch that. So move all of your layers to the side and just top stitch that other exterior piece. And make sure that your connector piece here, if you do the connector, is facing towards the exterior piece as well. Is the bottom fabric a batik? No, it's a vinyl. It's the faux leather tooled vinyl from My Punk Broidery. It's super cool in person. It's gorgeous, and I think they have, if they still have it, they have a couple different uh, colors, purple and 
blue. This one's the, the blue gray color. Okay. So here is the part where we put in our rivet holes or where I put in my rivet holes. Um, so, cause your back can lay nice and flat right now like this. Okay. And if you put in your rivet holes right now, it makes it so much easier for um, after the bag's all assembled. Hopefully my tool works. It's been kind of giving me fits. Okay, so what I do is I lay my bag flat out like this. And I want a rivet right here to support my um, connector. And I'm, I'm doing it through my exterior and my lining on that side. It's gonna go through both pieces, okay? And then I want one on my connector here. My top piece seems to come out. And just make sure you're getting it all the way through. And I want another one on this connector here. slipped sorry okay and then this side hi Deborah from France what time is it in in France right now I was trying to pick a different time so other people could watch. One more. Did it go through? Nope. I don't know if you oil these things or what, guys, but... After this tool is being used a while, it doesn't work so well. <laughs> My hands already are killing me. I did another Zanita backpack last night and that binding, whenever I do binding, I just hurt. So my hands are already hurting me. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to clean it. I think it's sticky and it's got all sorts of stuff on it. I think I need to give it a good clean with an alcohol wipe and it'll be much better. Okay, so I have punched holes that go all through both linings, okay? So when I turn my bag and finish it, it'll be super easy to put the rivets on and it'll be really secure. All right. Sorry, got a drink. All right, so let's put this bag together. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I think that's it, guys. I think we're about there. Okay. We are going to, um, I am skipping the Peltex in the bottom because I used the Decaville light on my outside pieces. But normally, I would put a layer of Peltex in my bottom lining at the end like she does in the pattern. So if you're not using anything to support your bottom at all, make sure you do that. Maureen, it is a hole punch that I got from Amazon. Um, I can try and remember to link that below as well. Okay, so now we're just doing linings together and um, exteriors together and we are just gonna sew around this whole thing. I am going to make sure my my um, overlay, not overlay, but my vinyl pieces down here match. Okay, you really wanna make sure those match up. 
And then I will leave a big old hole in the bottom of my lining. And I will turn it through the lining and then close it up through the pocket. Okay. So just make sure you match all your seams first when you're doing this part. Seven twenty p.m. in the UK. Awesome. So I chose kind of a good time for other people in other countries this time, huh? I'll have to remember that. I'll try and I'll try and rotate. Okay. So when I sew this, I am going to. Um, make my seam allowance bigger when I get to the lining because you want it to fit snug into your bag. All right, so here we go. And I'm hoping I don't run out of bobbin. I think I'm okay. All right, so it's a half inch seam allowance. And I don't even uh, stop my threads, I just, or cut my threads, I just pull it over to the next side and cut from there, or cut, and sew from there. Uh. And right here, I've got quite a, a bump going with my vinyl, so I'm gonna put a folded piece of leather underneath. The back of it, it's just like doing the whole hump jumper thing that people do, but I don't have one of those, so this works too. And it helps you get right over that. There you go. Okay, so now I'm onto the lining, so I'm gonna increase my seam allowance. Yeah, I put the bag together, I must have missed a question. Um, I don't want to put the rivets on now because it will be too hard to uh, sew it like this. If they're connected together, the exterior and the lining, if they're connected together, I can't lay it flat to sew it. So you want to put the rivets on, rivet holes in first, sew it together, and then put the rivets through it since you're doing it through both the exterior and the lining. If the rivet was just going through the exterior and not the lining, you could totally do it before. Four, and I just <laughs> got busy talking and sewed up my lining. Uh, hold, please. <laughs> oh, I'm doing good today. Sorry about that. Okay. So don't sew up the bottom of your lining like I just did. I'm teaching you all the things not to do. I am an expert at that. Okay. <laughs> oh. There we go. Let's try that again. Leave a hole in your lining, said the lady who didn't do that. Okay. Okay, go to the other side, just like that.
Okay, and when you get to the top of this lining, make sure you go back to that half inch seam allowance right up here. Almost there. I'm going to trim down my seam allowances and then box my corners. <laughs> What's going on? <gasps> oh, man. I do lots of seam ripping. I'm telling you, that's the great thing about pre-recorded videos. You don't see all, all of my mistakes. You only see some of them. <laughs> I'm glad you guys understand. Okay. Almost there. I need new scissors. Anybody have scissors they love? Mine are all dull. I've abused them. What time zone were mountain? So it is 12.30 currently in the afternoon. All right, I think I got all my threads here. All right. Sorry, I'm reading. Um, yes, thank you, Nat. Oh, you're welcome, I'm glad I'm helping helping people with my mistakes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna turn this through, yay! We're almost there, guys. This took a little longer than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Oh no, we don't wanna turn this through. We wanna box our corners. See? Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> box your corners. Here we go. So I'm just going like this, matching up my seams, okay? Um, you know, I have a really good pair of like good metal scissor scissors that I need to get sharpened and I don't know even where to begin looking for somebody to do that. And I don't know if it's cheaper just to buy a new pair, actually. So I don't know. Okay, other side. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, you could use a rotary cutter. Oh, thanks, Charlie. Yeah, I forget things all the time. I'm glad I remembered to box these corners before I turned it, though. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. And your other side here. Super easy, just boxing them up just like this. Your local quilt chart. My, my comments on here are not updating as quick as you guys are doing it. Sorry about that if I'm really delayed in, in answering stuff. See, they're all coming up here. I'll have to see if I, we have a local quilt shop. I'll have to see if they sharpen scissors. Yeah, I think uh, the place where I bought my machine did suggest people, but I'd rather just, I don't wanna have to like mail them somewhere or go halfway across town. It would be nice if I could 
Um, Carol, why did I leave the zipper pocket open? Because what I'm going to do, I do this in almost all my bags now, is I'm just boxing up my corners now. Um, I am going to pull my lining. I'm going to pull the bag through the lining and then I am going to pull my lining through my pocket and sew up my lining. Um, and then I'm going to sew up my pocket and it gives me a nice finished seam on the inside of my lining. And I don't have that weird, I closed my bag through my lining seam. Does that make sense? <laughs> It's just the method I like to use, really. You don't have to do it that way, but that's the way I like to do it. Okay, and I'm gonna trim this down. I'm not sure the name of the hole punch. Does somebody have the name of that hole punch that I use? Could they give it to, uh, who's asking? I just saw it, to Faye. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head what it is called. Helena, you ran out of Decaville light. Can you double 809? I, I guess it depends what you are making. I don't know. I've only used 809 for card slots. I've never, well, no, that's not true. I've used it for stabilizing bags before. When I first started, get Kai 7205 scissors. Yeah, those are good, Katrina. I'll have to try those. Maybe after my next round of hard work comes in. All right, so trim down these as well. You know what? On these bottom ones, I'm gonna do another um, little row of stitching right next to that row in case it wants to pull, just to play it safe. Double pull out, okay. <laughs> yep, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Sounds good. I like it. Okay, now we're going to pull this through. Let's see what we have. Oh, thank you. Put my tape on my prongs. That came off. Thank you, thank you. The whole, I don't remember. It's a, ja yeah, it's a Japanese tool. All right, there we go. There we go. Let's pull this through. <laughs> Sorry, Carol. That's just where my mind goes sometimes. Sorry. I've got a long, long thread here. Just a minute. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. Okay. Oh, I think I like the Decaville on the bottom of this, guys. I can already tell. I think I would do it like that again. Ooh, babe. 
good. All right, so all that we have to do now is close up our lining and then close up our pocket. So let's see what we have. That's cute. What do you guys think? See, and then my connectors are right there on the opposite side. So when they're on your body, it hangs nice because they're opposite. All right, so let's close it up. Oh, uh, what can be used instead of Decaville? I mean, try 809. I'm not sure what can be used instead of Decaville because all I use is Decaville. So I don't know if somebody else has Suggestions, Peltex is not quite the same. Peltex is more of a hard bottom stabilizer. So I'm not sure. That is a good question. Okay. Sand Dollar Studio, there is no substitute. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I use, so I don't, I've never had to substitute it for anything else, so I'm not sure what else you could use. You could go on Facebook and ask some of the groups if there's something else they like to use, but Decafil's my go-to. Yeah, I guess 809 would be a substitute. All right, so I am sewing up my pocket here. Oh, did I run out of bobbin again? Yep, just a second, please hold. A million bobbins over here. Okay, sewing up my lining and then I'll sew up my pocket. So I did make this bag on this live different than my tutorial that I have on my YouTube. So this is a little bit different. Okay, now I wanna sew up my pocket. Sorry, so many layers here. Here we go. All right, sew up your pocket. It should be nice and easy because we ironed it. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, Decaville's kind of amazing. I love it so much. It, if you are going to be making lots of bags, it is definitely worth investing in an order of it. I, yeah, highly recommend. Oh, I just cut my finger. That's nice. Sharp scissors. All right. Push your pocket back in. I know. It is, Robbie, it's my favorite too. I do it on any bag that I can. Okay. I'm not gonna spend too much time putting that in. All right, so 
I think I will stop there. All that needs to be done is rivets put in and your handles installed. That's it. So I'll show you real quick. I'll just, so I'm gonna go through and I'm going to, I'll show you with one. Because this video is long now. Okay. So I already have my holes punched on my lining and my exterior. So I just have to put my rivet on and press it. And that's it. So I'll put my rivets on and I will put my handles on, which I did 22 inch handles. For those of you wondering, I'll clip it on here real quick so you can see. And I'll just rivet these on, most likely. Okay, just like that. And then I have my crossbody strap. I apologize if I missed comments. It's, it wasn't updating on my uh, computer. Um, would these fabrics work on the bag? I forget which, um, yeah, I mean, anything would work with this bag, really. Okay, that's it. So you put the rivets in, put your handles on. It's such a cute bag. It really does go fast if you're not messing up like me. I just, <laughs> I fumbled a little bit today. Sorry, guys. But I hope you guys like this pattern. It is so cute. It's probably one of my top five favorites right now to make. Um, I love how this bag comes together. It's gorgeous. No, you don't have to top stitch because you already top stitched. Isn't that amazing? No top stitching on this bag, which is another bonus, I think. But look how cute that turned out on the top. Yeah. Okay. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody. Um, thanks for supporting me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I try and do one live a week. I won't do one next week, though, because I'll be out of town. But I will be back the week after that. And I'll have some new videos up. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll try and read them. All right. I'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving.